Believe me, Judicial Watch is going to investigate the heck out of this. First up is the urgent matter of an ongoing attack on the sovereignty and national security of uh, the United States of America, our homeland, by the Chinese Communists and the failure of the Biden administration to address this attack with any seriousness or urgency. So as of now, according to the Biden Pentagon and various reports, there's a balloon over the continental United States. The last I read, it was somewhere over the center of the nation. Uh, it had a, supposedly been over sensitive areas in the north, uh, north central part of the United States. I guess it was Montana. And <laughs> no one knows why it's there. Um, the, the, the assumption is that it's surveilling, it's a spy uh, craft, and uh, our national security is put at risk. And obviously, you know, we're just assuming the payload is neutral in that respect and doesn't have the ability to do some significant damage, whether it be EMP or, um, you know, the release of a pathogen or maybe a test run for all of that. And still, as I go to, as we go to tape today, uh, that balloon is allowed to uh, basically move unmolested through our airspace. Now, does that sound acceptable, acceptable to you? Does that sound right to you? Now, allegedly, the Biden administration says, well, they can't shoot this balloon down because, you know, the payload is too big or they're afraid of the damage on the ground. Unacceptable. Unacceptable. First of all, why was it even allowed to enter our airspace? Secondly, are you telling me in this day and age there are no contingencies for this type of operation or this type of challenge? Now, based on what I'm seeing, it's very interesting to see. You know, we presume that because it's a balloon, the technology or the significance uh, in terms of national security of the penetration isn't important. Actually, it's just the opposite. Balloons, because of the advances in technology, are uh, extremely valuable uh, um, platforms for monitoring and spying on and maybe doing other nefarious things uh, for countries you're interested in in terms of intelligence. Uh, because a satellite typically, you know, they pass over an area of interest and there's a limited time they're over the area so they have to have another satellite pass over to maintain uh, continuous coverage in any, uh, in any measurable way. With a balloon, the balloon, practically speaking, can stay over an area for a longer period of time and gather intelligence in a more straightforward, frankly, cheaper manner. And in this case, we have the Chinese essentially admit it's theirs, pretending it's some sort of meteorological civilian aircraft that accidentally came our way. No one really believes that, nor should they. And the Biden administration certainly, uh, by all accounts, doesn't believe it. But certainly they're not taking any action. And why aren't they taking any action? To me, this is a sad day for America. It's concerning. It's disturbing in the sense that we are kind of like this hapless giant, unable to do anything in the face of this rather obvious provocation, this brazen attack on our sovereignty, and the failure and the exposure of our weakness in the face of this. And the weakness, it's not, uh, not a, in my view, a technological or military weakness. It's political weakness. This is the decision by our military leadership with the uh, approval, presumably, of President Biden, who's commander in chief, not to do anything to protect our homeland from this ongoing attack. I mean, if this was a Chinese aircraft, would we just let it fly around for as long as it wanted before it left our airspace? If it were a drone, we would we let it fly around for as long as, as long as it could stay up before it left our airspace? Of course not. We'd take it down. And certainly we'd have plans to take it down with an effort to minimize the potential risks to human life on the ground. And if I were the president, I would tell the military, you got to take care of this within hours. You got to do it. This is unacceptable. And frankly, it's already too late because the damage to our reputation has been done. Our enemies now know a, a significant weakness, arguably 
I, you know, I don't know enough about the secret capabilities of the United States defense, aid, the defense system uh, in terms of uh, guarding against this type of intrusion, but certainly they've been exposed. You know, the presumption has to be by our enemies, this is a way uh, to uh, penetrate our airspace. And maybe once you're here, nothing's going to be done. I mean, we're all at risk as a result. And we are at risk at this moment. Every second this, this balloon it remains aloft is, uh, increases the risk to every one of our lives. China obviously is no friend of ours. Uh, they are targeting us in this brazen way. And do you think they're doing it because they're, they're, uh, they're going to follow up with a plate of cookies? Of course not. Of course not. And let me suggest that one of the reasons the Chinese sent this balloon over and really are giving us uh, the, you know, thumbing their noses at us uh, is because Joe Biden is compromised by Hunter's and his business dealings as vice president and then during his private sector experience and who knows what's going on now with the Chinese government. Judicial Watch uncovered, for instance, that Hunter Biden traveled to China at least five times on Air Force Two with Joe Biden. And we know separately in one of those visits, uh, Joe and Hunter were involved in a meeting together with one of Hunter's business associates or um, wannabe business associates. And then after President Biden uh, was... Um, you know, left office as vice president during the period of the Trump administration, there were these business efforts to uh, uh, come to deals with uh, Chinese business interests, including uh, one of China's biggest energy um, operations. And that's where the 10% for the big guy comes in, that supposedly Joe Biden was the big guy who was going to benefit in a significant way and in a secret way from this, uh, certainly from a, from a national security perspective, problematic effort by the Biden clan to uh, translate Biden's public service, or maybe it was uh, something other than public service, uh, into uh, personal profit after he left. And as I said, the evidence is this was happening while he was vice president. Off, uh, Hunter Biden's business partners and operators we're working hand in glove with uh, Joe Biden's uh, vice president's office and, you know, all sorts of other uh, skullduggerous activity while he was vice president. And to the degree it involved China, he's been compromised. To the degree it involved Russia, he's been compromised. And certainly one of the calculations that Putin made makes sense when he was deciding whether to invade Ukraine is, well, who's going to be objecting? What, what, who, what is especially the United States going to do? And I guarantee you, he thinks Biden is weak. Certainly be the evidence of his, his uh, mental challenges, his cognitive challenges. But more importantly, he's compromised. And he's been compromised because of his relationships through his son with Russia and Burisma, etc. So he's thinking, you know what? Biden is controllable, or I suspect because of his weaknesses, his corruption and otherwise, this is something I can push on and I'm not going to get the sort of uh, pushback I would typically get from another president of the United States. And I think he probably called it correctly, certainly at least for the initial part of the invasion when uh, the Biden administration was seemingly willing uh, to have the Ukrainians um, cave in completely. Uh, to the Russian invaders. Same goes for China. When China is making calculations uh, and, and looking at the short-term and long-term and medium-term ballgame, why would they not uh, factor into their calculus whether or not Joe's been compromised? And Joe knowing he's been compromised. It's one thing to think, well, you know, he's corrupt, therefore he's a different type of president, and uh, we have more opportunities with someone like him. But also, he's been compromised by these folks making the decision. So, Joe knows, the Chinese know, he's on the take. Or so it's been alleged quite credibly.
You've got Russia, you've got China. So what are some of the decisions China are making? China is making because of this? I would submit sending balloons in a brazen, provocative way into U.S. territory. And you know, I'm not naive. This isn't the first time it's probably happened. But in this case, the U.S. government obviously was forced to disclose this. I'm just making a lot of presumptions because I guess based on reports, the balloon was seen by the civilian population, uh, folks in airplanes and commercial pilots and such. But so when it's exposed, they still don't know what to do. I just can't believe they don't know what to do. So anyway, so the Chinese do this. I think uh, our compromised, corrupt political system with Joe Biden at the head encourages uh, this type of brazen uh, testing of our will and our political um, spine. And it shows that we're weak, we're hapless. And uh, I, I kind of think of the Ottoman Empire. It used to be called the sick man of Europe. Is the United States the sick man of the West in terms of our, our ability to defend our own homeland from this ongoing attack? I mean, if you see this video and nothing's been done about this balloon, head should roll in terms of people being removed from military command and significant and urgent hearings. And this is something I think, even based on at least the initial responses, uh, Democrats are gonna be furious about. There's no excuse for this. And I tell you, I see our military haplessness in the face of this from the leadership. And I just see politicized generals who's spending too much time uh, abusing their personnel with vaccine mandates, uh, trying to propagandize and brainwash uh, their rising leadership, the cadets and, and midshipmen, et cetera, and the various military academies. We just filed a lawsuit, for instance, against the uh, Defense Department for documents about what we know to be CRT propagandizing on our cadets at the U.S. Air Force Academy. So forgive me when I see a top Air Force general telling Americans, well, they can't, they don't need to know where this balloon is. They, I guess we can, they can just look up at the sky to see if it's above their heads. I mean, this is like, this is crazy town. I mean, is it any surprise that our military leadership that is so infatuated with politicizing and engaging in social engineering, targeting our, 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 our men and women in uniform uh, when push comes to shove, uh, f frankly, don't know what to say or do in the face of almost a 19th century attack in terms of essentially the technology on the United States homeland. Inexcusable. Inexcusable. And believe me, Judicial Watch is going to investigate the heck out of this. We had FOIAs that went out immediately into, in response to this attack. We're going to find out what went on, what's gone on previously, and what other risks we're facing as a result of this haplessness from this, not only the Biden administration, but our defense establishment. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.